Hey everybody, it's Phil here from Lonely Soul, and in this quick video, we're going to show you how to take a project from Logic Pro 10, export the files, and then send them to us here at Lonely Soul Studios. And we're going to go ahead and walk you through that process right now in case you've never done it. So first things first, we're going to assume that you're in your working project within Logic Pro X. If you aren't, go ahead and open it up now. And you should see something that's pretty similar to what you're seeing on the screen. We're using a sample session here. The first thing that we're going to do to complete the process is that you're going to go up to File up in the top left-hand corner of Logic Pro, and you're going to select Export. And under Export, you're going to select All Tracks as Audio Files. Once you've done this, you're going to see a few options that we're going to be able to customize. The first thing that we're going to want to do is create a new folder for your session export. I recommend finding something simple and easy, maybe on your desktop, and then simply selecting New Folder down on the bottom of this option. Once you've done that, you'll be given the option to create a name for your folder. You should really just make it something that's easy to remember and easy to find. It'll help along in the process when you finally get ready to send the files over to us. Then once you do that, you're going to do a save as of the file. So what I like to do is I do a sample underscore export. Then I like to do a save as that's specific to the actual exporting process. So go ahead and give it a name that you'll remember or that's relevant, maybe the track title and your artist and the band name. Um, but what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to give it sample underscore export. One other little thing that I like to do um, here, and I also like to see that makes things easier, is if you could just go ahead and put the tempo um, of the track in there as well. It's just a little trick that helps us. It speeds things along for us and it makes it tends to make our work a little bit easier. And then what that does is it means for you is that we can get stuff back to you a little bit quicker and with a little bit more precision. The next part of setting the customization is that you're going to have some options down below that. The first one is going to be the save format. Here there are three options. I'd really suggest just keeping it at WAVE. WAVE files have good compatibility between both PC and Mac systems, and besides that, within DAWs themselves. WAVE files have been around forever, and it's a, it's a format that any DAW can import, export, and process, so it's a, it's a very friendly cross-platform format. So I would just go ahead and I would make sure that you have WAVE selected. Your next option is going to be regarding bit depth, and this should simply be the highest resolution that you tracked with, and it should match your session. So if you have a 2496 session, you'll just want to make sure that you have 24 bits selected. That will make sure that you're, you're outputting the highest resolution possible that the session can. If it was recorded in 2496, there's no reason to downsample it down to 16-bit for us. Just go ahead and send us the 24-bit files that will allow us to do better work with the higher resolution files. Your next option is going to be for Bypass Effect Plugins. It's a checkbox. You'll want to make sure that you actually check this, because while you might have actually put some plugins in while you're doing your rough mix to see how things might sound, we really want the raw files. We want to be able to do our best mixing. And to do that, if we have access to the raw files right off the bat, it makes things super easy and speeds things along again. So go ahead and give that a check to make sure that none of the plugins that you might have uh, played along with actually get sent over or have done anything to affect the files that we're going to listen to. Don't worry about if, the, if you think that the track doesn't sound good or you try to do some processing to make it sound better um, because of somebody who's being self-conscious or anything like that. We get that all the time. Um, it's our job to make those th to help make those decisions and give you the best product. Unfortunately, if processing has been done and given to us, there's not a lot we can do to remove that processing. So we would definitely much rather have the raw files as they are, and we'll make sure that we work with you to make the mix every bit as good as that you want it to be. The next checkbox that you have an option of selecting is Include Volume Pan Automation. Now, just like the previous selection where we actually checked it to remove any plugins, this one we're going to actually want to leave unchecked. And the reason being is because just like we don't want any plugins affecting the files that we're receiving, we also don't want any automation regarding volume and panning. Um, we're going to probably make a lot of those decisions ourselves to give you the best mix we can. And if we have that information already included, we're just going to have to strip it anyway. Um, if you're concerned about, well, you know, I really want to make sure that the that, that pan is there and people understand that that's what we want to have happen or something like that, that's great. We're going to have a pre-production meeting before we start any work with you where you'll be able to outline those for us and say, hey, at this particular point in the track, we want to make sure that there's a pan happening. And that's something that we will work with you to make sure that happens. The next option that you have is going to be for normalize. I'm going to keep this really simple. There's three options here. for In Logic Pro 10, just leave it for overload protection only. This will actually allow us to keep the dynamics intact of the tracks as you bounce them. And then the final option that you have is a checkbox for add resulting files to the audio bin. 
This is another example where we want to leave it unchecked. If it were checked, what it would do is as it bounces the files, it would re-import them into the existing session. In fact, basically in effect, doubling your tracks. Um, and we don't want to do that. So uh, for this instance, just go ahead and leave that unchecked. One small note about Logic Pro 10 is when you actually do this and you bounce all of your audio files to tracks, is that aux tracks are not bounced. So anything that you have as a send or an effect that's on an aux track, those will not be exported as part of this process. Logic Pro 10 will only export audio files and instrument files. And the instrument files are actually going to be exported as audio files. So we'll get those. Um, and the, and the, any virtual instruments that you have on the track will actually play out um, and give that content to us. So that's one thing to consider. Also, because it's going to bounce any instruments out, we won't have the MIDI data. So that's another file. We're going to show you how to do that in another video on how to actually get that MIDI data to us if by chance you want us to actually use a different virtual instrument. Say you have an upright piano in a specific part and you know after thinking about it, you really want to use one of our grand pianos. That's something that we can totally do. If we have the MIDI files, super easy to do that. The only thing left to do at that point is just hit save. And Logic Pro 10 will take care of the rest of it here. And after it goes through the bouncing process, you'll be returned to the desktop. And then the next step is simply to take those files that we put in the folder and then send them over to us here at Lonely Soul Studios.